Roberts. I'd like to welcome you to Go West, Sing West. Now let's take a look at the old West. Yee-hoo! Let's go West! Today I want to introduce you to the Cowboys, the songs and <laughs> some of the stories. Now, you may know me already from the Wells Fargo TV series and from over 60 Western movies. But what you might not know is that in my second profession, I'm a working cowboy. I've been raising horses on my ranch for over 40 years. A lot's changed, but cattle and horses are still raised pretty much like before in Texas. This is a cattle drive. These animals had to have their own pace, otherwise, it may have arrived with the dealer after 1,000 miles, thin as a snake. A bull was worth $5. Way up north in Chicago, it sold for 50, 10 times as much. And in 1850, there were 5 million of these longhorns roaming around in Texas, wild, without any owner. All you had to do was catch them, brand them, and get rich with them. It was easier for the old cowboys because they didn't have a chance to spend their money unless they took a ride to town or got to Abilene or Dodge with a cattle drive. Yes, life was in full swing here. Brawls and fights were going on almost daily. During the course of one month, there were 17 men killed in Dodge City, all with the same cause, <laughs> lead poisoning. You got a gun. Let's listen to a song that a started its trip around the world right here. A Wild West version of an Irish folk song introduced in 1876 by Francis Henry Maynard, The Cowboy's Lament. Presented here by the great Johnny Cash. As I walked out on the streets of Laredo, as I walked out on Laredo one day, I spied a young cowboy all wrapped in white linen, all wrapped in white linen, cold as the clay. The deputy marshal has shown up. He's looking for a stranger, and he approaches the chuck wagon cook asking him if he has seen a man and possibly well, could describe him. Like. And the cook answers. Well, yes, sir. He had on Levi's blue shirt and a corduroy vest, and he had a great big scar on his right cheek that run clean down his neck into his collar there. Had about a three-day growth of beard, and his nose was the longest nose I've ever saw, and it kind of twisted off to the left there, like he was smelling something bad over there. And he was wearing an old, wore-out J.B. Stetson hat with a braided horsehair band on it. Now, I didn't get too close to look at him, or I might have been able to help you out some. <laughs> In 1862, President Lincoln signed a bill declaring the building of a transcontinental railroad, a national railroad. Along the 42nd parallel, the route was to follow closely the trails of the 49ers, the pioneers, the Mormons, 2,000 miles from the Missouri to California, the greatest endeavor since the building of the Chinese Wall. The wedding of the rails, as celebrated by the whole nation, took place on May the 10th, 1869. The rail laying crews from the Union and Central Pacific, and the two engines from east and west approached each other near Salt Lake City in Utah. The historic photograph went around the world. Even if the governor of California didn't like the whiskey bottles in it and tried to block distribution, during the end, the two crews actually staged a race. The leader of the Central Pacific crew boasted that his Chinese workers could lay 10 miles of track in one shift. 
$1,000 were at stake. And then eight huge rail carriers, assisted by hundreds of Chinese, laid 10 miles of track in 12 hours. And after a telegraph wire had been attached to the last, the golden spike, the two presidents raised the sledge and both missed the nail. Anyway, America jubilated. America had done it. I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. I've been working on the railroad just to pass the time away. Can't you hear the whistle blowing? Rise up so early in the morn. Can't you hear the captain shouting? Dinah, blow your horn. In 1851, the greatest come together of Indian bands and leaders was staged right here. More than 10,000 Cheyenne, Sioux, Crows, and others gathered to sign a peace treaty with the great White Father in Washington. It was one among 370 between red and white men, and most all of them were broken by the white partner. But as you might imagine, in 1851, many tribes and their leaders still had hope and believed in this new treaty signed in Laramie, and a big powwow took place. The hour-long ceremony of dancing, drumming, and singing. At the powwow in Laramie, the Indians could not anticipate that a few years later, the white man himself would be quarreling and fighting each other. The Civil War from 1861 through 1865 is another drama of the West. The Luboff Choir with the fighting anthem of the North. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. And as the Northerners had their song, so had the soldiers from the South. In Dixieland, I'll take my stand to live and die. In Till next time, this is Dale.